All right. Uh, so I applied my uh, deployment to EKS cluster. Uh, so and I'm now able to access the service. Uh, works pretty well. Um, I connected to the database. So I have a backend service and then uh, a database service. So uh, it works pretty well. Yeah. Um, all right uh, looks good uh, so uh, if um if I go back to I'm logged in uh, in the AWS console uh, so this is my cluster and if we check the resources I have my services there look pretty good and um, and these are my pods, these are my deployments. Um, look good. Uh, so um, this is how my deployments look like. Uh, so this is the back end one. Um, and basically the only thing to note here is the image. So I you know, created my image earlier from this Docker file and then I pushed it to ECR and then uh, I get a link from ECR. I have another video that shows how to create and upload and you know and push an image to ECR. But basically if I come to ECR um, I already have my image there and uh, boom. So this is it. So our uh, all I need to do is to is to get is to get uh, is to get uh, the link to the image yeah so uh, if you can see here this is the URI and then of course with the with the tag added yeah so which is this basically the rest of the config stays the same also the key thing to note is that the type of the service here is a load balancer and uh, while when we are running on minikube um, when we set it to load balancer, we had to use Minikube tunnel uh, for us to, you know, for this to be able to work. But otherwise, we, you, you know, we would use node port for us to, you know, uh, to be able to access our service locally. Then uh, the Postgres one are, is this. Uh, this is how it looks. So the deployment is this. Of course, I have a secret. I have, you know, um, persistent volume, volume claim, and all that. Uh, right. So pretty much the same stuff. Are, yeah, pretty much the same stuff. I have an ingress here, but I haven't deployed that one. And um, the other thing to note is that uh, my DB, uh, my DB settings are, the thing is here I have the host is, um, um, is, is, is this database service which is uh, which is uh, mainly this all right and exposed on port uh, 543 so our uh, everything looks good so what I want to do is um, I will I will just delete the deployments and uh, I redo them so that we can we can you know we can see how that I just basically dip like delete and and reapply them so uh, nothing much there so i have my deployment here so i'm going to come locally so that we see how that works um, oh lots of stuff here so um all right so if i say kubectl get deployment um you can see the same deployments I have here. They are the ones I have. If I say kubectl get service, uh, you can see the services I have here is, you know, what I have down here. Uh, looks good. And this is the external IP that uh, we are basically using. So this is the external 
a URL that we are using basically to access uh, the service on port 8000 and uh, we, we exposed this service on port 8000 if we are to check again here port, port 8000 uh, but within our pod it, it runs on port 9000 so I differentiated them so that we would not uh, get confused of which one we are exposing on the service yeah all right so um now our uh, before I apply my configuration, if I delete the deployment, I just want to show something here. I have Minikube on my PC and I also have, you know, it has a Minikube cluster. So um, our one would wonder how do I know which one I'm working with, yeah? Whether I'm working with EKS cluster or uh, Minikube. So, uh, for example, if I uh, start Minikube right now, now, um, good. So what will happen is if I try to get service right now, it will, um, you know, get the services on on e you know, on Minikube cluster and every commander, every kubectl commander execute will be on, um, will be running on, will, will be directed to the Minikube cluster. So how do I change back to EKS cluster? Right. So we have this, um, let me go to home. So we have, uh, you know, a hidden folder called cube. All right, so uh, inside here, there is a config. Uh, so if we see our, let me try and open it in code. Um, Visual Studio code. All right, so if, if we look at that, we see that our, it has, uh, there's this section context it has different contexts so there is uh, uh, you know under context we can see the cluster being used the user and then the name so the name you can see that this context is minikube then we have our uh, this one then we have this one and then we also have current a uh, context all right so this current context determines uh, which cluster that we are going to use we are going to be applying our commands to so uh, for us to be able to um, uh, to switch back to using EK, eks cluster you can say kube ctl r so there is uh, there is a command called config this one here uh, config are uh, then it has something called uh, use context which sets the current context in a cube config file yeah so our uh, so all we'll do is um, use context and here it doesn't matter where we are at uh, as long as we execute the command uh, so use context. So what we'll do is come here. We check the context. So this is Minikube. So the one that I'm interested in uh, is uh, uh, it's not this. This is the one I used some time back for another class, for another EKS class I created some time back. But um, this is the one that I am interested in. All right. So you have to know like what your cluster is called. In my case, my cluster is fed hr dash cluster if, if we if, if we check back uh, if we check back my cluster uh, you can see this is my cluster so uh, no this is it basically so um, so all I need to do is uh, to exit you know to use that context are uh, oh no why is that uh, oh yeah okay no 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 the context or so this is yes so 
this is yes this is the cluster or oh, sorry this is the cluster and the context is this this is the name of the context yeah um looking good here all right uh, note that it doesn't matter where i am at in terms of the path um even if i'm in my home directory uh, this this still works fine so if now i check in my file you see the current context changed to to what i put right now so it means that i can actually change back to for example minicube and boom it changes yeah, as long as i get the context name right yeah uh, so if i change back to that that's so if now i execute my kubectl get service um uh, okay get service boom now we are on eks cluster yeah so i thought we should know this and uh because uh, if you have minikube uh, you may start applying your configuration on minikube as opposed to eks cluster so now every command we execute is going to be on eks cluster all right so now um having understood that so let me open here so that we are able to see i want to delete these uh, deployments and then create them again um kubectl i'll just uh delete this uh, and apply it again so that we have an understanding of how i did this uh, so kubectl uh, i'll first uh, get deployment okay Okay, so kubectl uh, delete deployment are uh, boom. Perfect. So once that is deleted, in fact, if we refresh here, uh, this should be gone. Yes. So we now have one deployment left, and the pod is associated with. Um, with that deployment for FedHR Graphene are also gone, yeah? So our, if now I come back here, I, uh, this, this won't work anymore, yeah? Because my service, uh, this, this won't work anymore. This won't work anymore, yeah? Um, let's see, kubectl get service. Yeah, my service is still there, but my deployment is gone, meaning are the, un the underlying pods that were created and the containers in those pods, all that is gone. Yeah, so our my service, you know, cannot doesn't have anything to connect to because the container it's connecting to is is not there anymore. Yeah, so. You know that's why i get this uh, as you know as we can see in my graphene deployment this service it is exposed on port 8000 but it targets port 9000 and port 9000 is where uh, is the container port as we see here and it's where you know the container is the port exposed by the container so since my pods are deleted after deleting my deployment uh, this one also goes down so i will apply it again um and then and then we see what happens here so i just basically have to go in my project directory all right so uh if i see here so this is it um as we see here so i will apply this again kubectl apply minus f um, I apply that uh, boom that's applied my services and change it and we applied the new de the deployment so if we go back to deployments here and I refresh uh, we should see that perfect it's here looking good and also my pods um, let me check my pods yes so the pod uh, is back 
and uh, yeah so uh, if I go back here this this should be back up yeah um, all right and um, so that's it I decided not to like delete everything uh, because basically this is how I applied everything uh, I first created and pushed an image and then uh, because uh, because I will need it here in the deployment so I have this image is already like created and pushed to uh, to 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 ECR and then are uh, the same way I've applied this config the, the, this deployment is the same way I applied uh, this one for Postgres and the same way I applied this one so all the same stuff and basically the same way we do it on minikube is the same way we do it here so uh, pretty much uh, good there all right uh, thank you so much i uh, see you in another one